impact of excessive use of online pornography on relationships. Thank goodness for internet pornography because I will never be out of a job <laughs> because it's causing so much trouble out there. Conflict of interest slide, all right? The porn industry is not paying me to tell you how bad internet porn is, right? So you can be reassured about that. I'm going to talk about today's increasingly sexually explicit media, right, because we've got a, what's called a pornified culture. I want to define pornography. I want to look at the impact of, internet's, uh, of the internet and cyber sex. <clears throat> We're going to look at who's using porn in Australia and how old are they? The disturbing content and attitudes in porn, the pornification of relationships, I'm going to talk a little bit about addiction to internet pornography. Unfortunately, that's sort of a whole other lecture, so I can't go into that too much. Um, but I do, uh, I do see a lot of uh, men and the occasional woman with internet uh, pornography addiction. How do you begin to address uh, problematic internet porn use? So if you come across it in your practice or in your relationship, uh, what are you going to do about that? And finally, is porn use ever okay? I'm not going to talk about the science of pornography addiction, and I've given you a great, great website, all right? So if you want to find out how porn changes the structure, internet porn changes the structure and function of the brain, right? the brain's neuroplastic, has a significant effect. I'm not talking about child pornography. I'm not talking about the negative impact of pornography on youth, women, same-sex couples, and I am not talking about the toxicity of the porn industry. However, let's get going. Pornography has long been the focus of public concern. Right? Here's a quote. There is no sexual aberration, no perverse act, however frightful, that is not photographically represented today. Ivan Block, 1903. Right? Porn has been with us forever. Okay? If you go back to cave paintings, there's pictures of nudie men and women doing it. Um, so it probably will always be with us. This is a, pornog a pornographic postcard from 1910. See that sexy little slither of thigh there, right? Set uh, Victorian hearts racing. Ah, first Playboy cover in 1953, right? This could be the cover of Woman's Day now, okay? It's so mainstream. Right, let's have a look at a modern Playboy, okay? a little bit more explicit. Okay. There is a dramatic increase in sexually explicit media in the last 60 years, all right? So I'm talking about magazines, TV shows, movies, books, newspapers, advertisements, song lyrics, music videos, and of course, the internet. Um, it's very difficult to distinguish pornography-specific effect on relationships, which I'm going to talk about today, from those of the general climate of sexual uh, misinformation and gender inequality in uh, what we've got this now pornified culture. And I'm going to show you some examples of that because, of course, sex sells. So let's look at some advertisements. Okay. Women's magazines. Okay, Cosmo. Right. Uh, the one on, is it your left? Yes, the one on the left. Your best sex ever, 20 moves from cuddly to crazy, or you could read must read threesomes, right? One in the middle, wild summer sex, eight surprise moves from foreplay to fireworks. And whoever that is on the cover, her name is Nikki Minaj. I didn't know who she was. She is a, quote, mind-melting American rapper. Right? And she says, I demand an orgasm every time. Right? Then we we'll go finally to the right. And this is the sexy power issue, get what you want in bed, the workout that makes you better at sex, as well as 12 kinky quickies. Grab him and get it on. Now, I was in the airport on the way down here and I looked at the latest uh, Cosmo and it advertises 67 new sex tricks, including the tongue swirl that will send him over the edge. Right? 
I've been a sex therapist for as long as I can remember. I don't even know 67 new sex tricks. So I don't know where they're getting their information from. Okay? Let's look at this. Is this pornography? When my husband was growing up, he's 72, right? This used to be the porn, right? It was Post. It was, um, I think it was Pick, was the name of it, but Post magazine, right? He used to... Uh, there used to be a page three girl, I think, in the Daily Telegraph or the Daily Mirror, right? But this was considered to be pornography. This was considered to be sexy. Now it's in every news agency. Okay. These ads, which I'm going to show you, were assessed as unlikely to cause serious or widespread offence by the Advertising St Standards Agency, and they were not banned. All right? What do you think? Right? Therefore, a men's fragrance. Right? If you think that's bad, try this. Right? And what's really, really interesting about these pictures, and you'll often see it, is that these women's bodies are dismembered. Right? Just one part of the body is shown, often it's the breasts, right? but it's the genitals here. Right? I think that's very scary. What about a sexy hamburger ad, okay? Fill your desire for something long and juicy and flame grilled, right? It just tastes better. It'll blow your mind away. The Burger King Super 7-incher, right? If that doesn't have sexual overtones, what does, right? That's for a hamburger, right? Now, this is a still video from, uh, still from a music video, right? And I don't know about, well, I've got eight grandchildren, right? Uh, the oldest one is 17 now, right? This is not the kind of thing I want my 15-year-old grandson to be watching, right? Do you want your children <coughs> or grandchildren to be watching this? Because they are, because these are music video clips. They just have to go onto MTV to see them. So let's define pornography. The explicit depiction or exhibition of sexual activity in literature, films or photography that is intended to stimulate erotic feelings. Okay, porn is definitely in the eye of the beholder. If you have a look at uh, this uh, statue, Michelangelo's David, okay, this has been considered um, pornographic or obscene or offensive. Um, by many people, other works of art as well. And in fact, when they put this statue up in America, they put a fig leaf over his penis and pubic hair. Mm. Uh, photographs of that sculpture have been banned in schools, but get this, in November 1969, a poster image of the statue was confiscated by the Vice Squad in Sydney and the manager of the store was charged with obscenity. That's only in 1969. However, attitudes are changing. This is from a study called The Porn Phenomenon. 76% of adults said that a fully nude image is not pornography. 47% of adults said a fully nude image that is sexually arousing is not pornography. And 21% of adults said an image of sexual intercourse is not pornography. So pornography is very much in the eye of the beholder. So, is it harmful? This is a study that was commissioned in the late 1960s and it's the US President's Commission on Obscenity and Pornography in 1971, right, in the United States. Extensive academic investigation at that time concluded that the use of sexually explicit material did not play a significant role in the causation of social or individual harms. That was then. In 1991, the internet changed everything. 30% of all internet traffic is pornography, right? And you will often hear people say that the internet was built on pornography. With increasing access to the World Wide Web in the 1990s, we entered a new era of online sexual content and widespread activity which to this day still represents a sizable portion of internet traffic and income. And between 1998 and 2007, the number of pornographic websites on the internet grew by 1,800%. 
men are six times more likely to view pornography as women and they're more likely to spend more time viewing it. But that doesn't mean that women don't look at pornography. So we're talking here, internet pornography, we're actually talking generally about cyber sex. So what is it? And I want to tell you that my patients are engaging very enthusiastically in all of these behaviours. There's the viewing of erotic or pornograph pornographic uh, imagery, but that can include live video feeds of sexual activity from a webcam, all right? So what can you do? You can go on the internet, right? You can use your visa card, right? You can get some young woman in Romania or Russia or Bulgaria or wherever, right? And she will masturbate in real time in front of you. Right? So that's what a webcam can do. Then there's sexting. Right? A patient of mine I've been seeing for a while came to me and said, my 15-year-old daughter is sexting. What should I do about it? What is sexting? The sharing of explicit details of one's sex life, including pictures, videos, or descriptions of oneself or one's partner. Now, what I explained to that mother, and I told her to tell her ch child, all right, and I gave them some information about it, but sending a naked picture, that girl at 15 sending a naked picture of herself to her boyfriend is considered child pornography. All right? And in recent years, 240 underage young men and women have been charged with child pornography offences in Queensland. Right, because sexting is illegal if you're under the age of 18. Um, interacting with anonymous partners through online forums, right, this chat, right, social media, chat rooms, blogs, live video chat may include what's called chatabation. There's a whole new vocabulary around this, right? And real life hookups, right? Someone to meet or interacting with sex workers online. Now here's some sites. All right. You will have heard of Ashley Madison because uh, it was an, an extramarital affair site. All right. You could only, well, I was going to say you could only sign up for this if you're married, but how would you know one way or the other? Um, I had a patient uh, in her, she was 30, she'd been married for 10 years to her husband, she was bored. She decided to go on Ashley Madison. Uh, she hooked up with one guy, that was okay, that was all she was going to do, but then she thought she'd do it again, so she hooked up with another guy, and then eventually she hooked up with another guy and she fell madly in love with him, all right, and her marriage disintegrated. Then you can have Blender. I went on to Blender this morning. Blender says it links you up to singles who are up for sex in your postcode, okay? Um, there were 25 potential men in Willoughby, where I live, who are ready to have sex with me at 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> All right. When I tell them that I'm a uh, kind of rather late middle-aged grandmother, they might rethink it. Okay, but you can go on to Fling Finder, My Sex Hookups, InstantQuickies.com, and a new patient told me, Shagaholic.com. All right. An ocean full of naughty singles who scream for rescue and relief and are willing to have casual sex with you any time of the day or night. Can you see how the internet has changed the whole sexual scene? All right. Now, these websites promise that you're going to experience sexual ecstasy, but let's look at some research. In first-time hookups, 31% of men and only 10% of women reached orgasm. All right. So it's maybe not, a, not such hot sex as they say. Okay, internet porn has produced what has been called a new sexual revolution. Why? Because you can get sexual stimulation anywhere, anytime for anyone. Round the clock accessibility, all right? So he waits for his wife to go to bed, all right? Then he sits up for two, three, four hours looking at pornography. Instant gratification, all right? I Googled porn, I got two billion hits, okay? Unlimited availability of a wide range of sexual materials catering to all tastes, right? Let's look at some, you know, we all know about foot fetishes and things like that, right? I'm gonna to talk to you about two uh, 
specific tastes of my patients, right? The first one is a guy who is turned on by orthopaedic boots. You know those things that they wear, all right? Everywhere where you go, you see them in shopping centres, right? Well, he follows those women around wearing their boots, but there is a boot website, all right? And he looks at that and he masturbates, right? More shocking than that, all right, is the wife who found her, she sees me, she found her husband's porn stash. <clears throat> he had over 2,000 um, sexual tapes, images, whatever you want to call it. But what really shocked her was that he was into crush porn. Anybody ever heard of crush porn? You have, okay. You would be the only one in Melbourne probably. I hope you're not looking at it. Um, and that is, okay, for example, women in red high heel stiletto shoes treading on small, live animals. Right? So it might be a rat, it might be a mouse, or it could be a cockroach, it could be a grasshopper, no, it doesn't really matter. But a woman in China was arrested and imprisoned for doing crush porn with a kitten. Right? Now there are guys out there who are masturbating to that and you might say to me, how can that possibly be sexy? What happens to these guys is they get tolerance, all right? You know how drug addicts get tolerance, alcoholics get tolerance? These guys get tolerance. It's an addiction, all right? What happens is they need more and more and more. And it's really interesting because, in fact, porn addicts don't need more, they need different, all right? It is a novelty that stimulates dopamine release in the brain. It is shock, which also stimulates dopamine result in the dopamine release in the brain. So that's how crush porn works, all right? They get immune to softcore porn, they go to hardcore porn, then they can go to all this weird sort of stuff on the internet. Um, this endless novelty, all right, that you can get with the click of a mouse changes the structure and function of the brain. There's easy escalation to more extreme porn. What happens? You go onto a free porn site, and then the ads come up for pay porn, okay? And so the free porn is a hook to get you in. Uh, most internet porn is free. Uh, it's easy to hide, all right? In the old days, you used to have to hide your porn stash from your mother, okay? Don't have to bother with that now. And I've written assumed anonymity, right? Because all of these people, and I'll say guys, generally speaking, but some women, um, think that they're untraceable. Right, but there's nothing untraceable on the internet. So what's the upside? Internet porn means there's no more embarrassing sex shop moments, but there's a huge downside. Internet porn has created an increasing number of people struggling with compulsive and addictive sexual behaviour and it is negatively affecting their relationships. Who's watching porn in Australia? University of Sydney study, 70% of Australian men consume pornography online although that might be as many as 90%. And 30% of Australian women consume porn online. Age of viewers, all right, this is from Pornhub, all right, they don't tell us about viewers under the age of 18. The average age of exposure to, to pornography for both male and female children now is 11, all right, why? because every kid at school has got an iPhone, right? They can all dial up porn. It's a terrible thing. So this looks at 18 and above, okay? So you will see that as um, men get older, there are fewer of them looking. But what's really scary is you've got 18 to 24 year olds, you've got a third of them um, visiting uh, Pornhub and the average age is 35 years old. I'm going to skip over this slide, but basically it just says they're doing it a lot. What do they look at it on? There's your iPhone, okay? That's the preferred device. In 2007, mobile phones were the biggest distributor of pornography. 15.3 million smartphones in Oz, okay? So what are they watching? Thank you. What are they watching? Okay, top online searches. Number one, lesbian, okay? MILF. MILF is mother I would like to F, 
okay? My, my sons taught me that when they were at school. I prefer yummy mummy. Um, Asian massage cartoon, step mum, threesome, anal, hentai. Hentai is cartoon pornography. It's Japanese. It is extremely violent and very popular. Okay. The content is disturbing because it's dominated by themes of aggression, power and control. 42% of online porn depicts sexual violence, right? And in this research, what it found is that 94% of the aggression is directed at women and 95% of those women either gave a neutral response or responded to that aggression, which could be spanking, gagging, choking or slapping. They responded with pleasure. Right? What messages does that give men? about what women like in the bedroom. Uh, only 50% of porn users think it's always wrong if sexual acts are forced or painful. Only 40% images of someone being depicted in a demeaning way, they thought that was always wrong. What's, what a, de what's a demeaning image of women in porn on? Porn? Triple penetration. A penis in the mouth, a penis in the vagina and a penis in the anus all at the same time wearing dog collars and leashes, being led by masters, etc. There's a direct correlation between the amount of porn viewed and male stereotyping of women as hysterically euphoric in response to just about any sexual or pseudo-sexual stimulation and eager to accommodate seemingly every and any sexual request. Okay, so what's happening in relationships, all right? Is, are women, women being objectified? Right, is by these degrading depictions. Is this the most prominent form of sex education for men and is it, is it making an impact on their expectations of what their partner should be doing? Right? And is it affecting intimate and sexual relationships in a negative way? And the answer is a definite yes. Right? There is a direct correlation between the amount of porn viewed and lower satisfaction with relationships, feeling less in love, Right? greater acceptance of adultery and visiting prostitutes, increased sexual callousness towards women, lack of affection and foreplay during sexual encounters. They don't do foreplay in porn. Um, more aggression um, and perception of women as sex objects. Okay. So these distorted uh, perceptions lead to coercive demands for sex acts that usually don't appeal to the partner. The effect on marriage, right? Marital distress, devaluation of monogamy, an increasingly weak commitment, and a 300% increased risk of adultery, right? What happens to the partners, right? I won't go through this, right? But the partners of these porn addicts are extremely distressed, whether they're men or women. And most of them consider internet sex to be a form of infidelity and just as painful as a real life affair, right? This is interesting. It's a survey of wives of sex addicts. 70% met the criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. Lawyers say cyber sex triggers divorce. What about addiction? About approximately 10% of the adult population um, are going to become addicted to internet porn. Uh, and what is it about? It's not about sex. It's like every other addiction. It's about pain medication. Doesn't matter if it's drugs, alcohol, gambling, shopping, working, it's all the same. So we treat it the same as we would any other addiction. You've got to come out of denial. I've given you a couple of really good websites to look at. They are fantastic, all right? Um, filters, all right? Limiting the use of computers, help seeking. Right? There's lots of things that we can do, including residential programs. And there's some good programs, group programs for uh, sex addicts. I've, right down the bottom, I've got online support resources for men for giving up internet porn. They're both really good. So is porn ever okay? Right? Really, it depends on the frequency and duration of use. All right? The problem is print porn, yes, guys were addicted to that, but not like internet porn. 
because it encourages compulsive excessive use. There's an endless supply of novelty and shock, right? What about the content, right? Vanilla porn may be okay, but hardcore porn, not okay, right? It impacts the viewer's attitudes and expectations. And not only that, we have to take into account into we have to take into account the toxic nature of the porn industry. If you keep fueling this industry, it will continue, and it's a terrible industry. But you know what hurts most? Secrecy. Right. This is done in secret, and the discovery results in hurt and rage and shame in the partner. So, I'll just read this. Porn is toxic miseducation about sex and relationships. It's more toxic the more you consume, the harder the variety you consume, and the younger and more vulnerable the consumer. Right? We are seeing a revolution, right? and it's going to affect our young people, and we need to get the word out there. Thank you very much. <laughs>